it going? Oh boy, it's going. Don't forget the first rule of podcasting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'd like to report a theft. A theft? Yeah. So uh, on Sunday I woke up and somebody had stole a whole 60 minutes from me for oh. no reason whatsoever. <laughs> I ran around the house going, this no, can't wait. be right. This can't be right. And I was like, my microwave, my microwave <laughs> says that it's it's seven, oh, which no. sounds right. But then my computer phone and my computer and my watch said it was six. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> or maybe it was the other way around. Whatever. <laughs> my microwave was saying it was six and my phone was saying it was seven. I was like, I can't. The satellite in the sky cannot be correct. My stove and my microwave has to be right. <laughs> <laughs> this is too early. This is too early. <sighs> yeah. So I've, there's been a theft and uh, I'd like to report it. Well, at, at first I was like, oh, there was a theft and I didn't know about <laughs> it. And what's this story going to be? And then you went into daylight savings time. And I'm like, oh yeah, fuck daylight savings time. <laughs> it's, I, you know, we met in Arizona and there's no daylight savings time. Yeah, there. I grew up in Arizona. There's no such thing. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? It is literally the only thing about Arizona I like. <laughs> hey, and there was me. I was there. Yeah, but you weren't part of Arizona, right? Nah. Yeah. I was just. I, was I mean, just, I guess you lived there most of your life. I was life. just hanging out there. <laughs> you were just chilling until I showed up. I was just like, what is going on? No, but I hate daylight savings time. I hate both the fall back and the spring forward. The fall back is rad because you go, oh, cool. No. I get an extra hour. But no, mm -mm. you just get that hour back that they had stolen from you in the spring. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like taxes. It's all just an illusion. It's it's, it's an illusion, Michael. It's a total illusion that you believe you would start believing in the law. You're like, ooh, I get an extra hour. No, you don't. They're just finally <laughs> giving it back to you. <sighs> it's really bad. It's, I I hate it's it. It's mean. I woke up. I can't even remember what day it was. Was that Sunday or Monday? Sunday is when it changed. Okay. I woke up on Sunday and I, you know, went to the bathroom. I got ready to go to the the grocery store with you and we get in the car and we're driving and we get to the whole foods. And then I look up at the thing and I was like, wait a minute. It was just nine o'clock. What the hell? How's it? 10. I said 10 already. And then I looked down at my, my phone and I was like, no, it's nine o'clock. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> I was so confused because I didn't remember that it was supposed to be daylight yeah. savings time. And then I was like, oh, is it daylight savings time? Well, fuck daylight savings time. <laughs> exactly. It's the worst. I, yeah. I mean, there's wor where there's. That, it's terrible. There's it's way worse stuff in terrible. the world. But, but another dumb. cool thing yeah. is my tulips are coming up. Your tulips. Yes. I that planted. That you planted last year, right? Yeah. Well, yes. I forget when I planted them, but I planted them. Was it in 2020? Um, or 2019 yes it was in 2020 somebody said today last year when i refer to last year i mean 2019 <laughs> yeah because yeah, i don't i don't know what year it is yeah anyways i planted them under a full moon ah uh, and just because i like that stuff and and i got uh the first one that popped up this uh last week was one of the sweetheart ones which are all like bright yellow oh yeah those are pretty yeah those and I got nice. cosmopolitan ones, and then I got queen of the night. I think they're tulips. supposed to be like a dark purple. Oh, black ones. Almost. I think tulips are are one of the prettiest flowers in existence. They're really cool because they're really kind of you just plant the bulb, yeah, and then you just wait. You're like, well, I'll see they, when it gets warmer, <laughs> and they'll keep coming back, right? Yeah. They're annuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I have I've never dealt with before. I've always like marigolds or pansies mm. or some other kind of perennial that you have to plant every year, but I've never, I've never had an annual. So it's kind of like fun and thrill. I was wondering which one would come up first. And yeah, I like tulips a lot. Nice. We also have a board game about tulips. Oh boy. Planting yeah. them. 
<laughs> and windmills. I'd like to do real life. I just windmills <laughs> wind and mills. tulips. Yeah, no, it's windmill, not windmill. Oh, did I say meal? <laughs> windmill. That's that. That's that California coming out of me. <laughs> do you guys want to go hang out down at the windmill? <laughs> what? Hold on, let me get my wallet out of my drawer. <laughs> drawer. Oh, also got to get my sweatpants out of the washer. <laughs> What in the world? <laughs> I don't get it. It's just California accent. <laughs> I, you know, growing up in California, I didn't think that I had one. Yeah. I didn't realize I had an accent until I moved away from California. Mm-hmm. And then people are like, oh, yeah, what's up, bro? And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> but there is there is definitely an accent there. Yeah, there is. Just say, just, okay, when you're They're like, when, yeah, there is, when you're a little kid and you've got those, those box of colors and you, you draw with them, what are they, what are those called? Cray, crayons. <laughs> you lie. Say how you really say it. Crayons. Crayons. <laughs> Who in their right mind says, ooh, 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 I got a new box of crayons. Everybody in California. That? No, yeah. that can't be real. Just cruising on down the 101, trying not to poop my pants. <laughs> and spill my crayons. And spill what? my box of crayons, because if that waxing substance gets on the leather, I'm going to kill somebody. They're crayons. Crayons, yeah. I can say it right if I try, but <laughs> if I'm just talking, like if I'm just naturally talking, I say a lot of words just the way that I learned how to say them. So you keep crayons in your drawer yeah keep crayons in the drawers <laughs> so weird but okay right next to the washer <laughs> anyway that's just the way it goes <laughs> okay so this week um we got a quote that is quote thematic oh before we go on to the quote of the week just her talking Go ahead. What? <laughs> just, just say before that. We got a good editor. He'll edit this out. Oh, <laughs> or we'll leave it in. I was just gonna uh, say nothing. No, say it. I can't remember now because you oh. interrupted me. All right, quote of the week. I'm terrible. My bad. When playing a game, the goal is to win, but it is the goal that is important, not the winning. Oh, and that was. That was said by Reiner Knizia, who is a um, pretty prolific game designer. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not talking about like Monopoly or Clue that you get from. No, we're talking about German imported niche designer designer tabletop games. Yeah. Yeah. And Reiner Knizia has designed hundreds. Hundreds? Hundreds of games. We don't own nearly anywhere near all of the games that he's designed but we do have quite a few of his more popular designs because they're just excellent he's also mathematician so a lot of his games Uh, have a very like number crunchy some of his games if anybody complains about his games that's the complaint is that they're too mathematical Mm -hmm. but the games that we own that i love from him aren't very they, they still have math in them but they're not just straight up multiplication tables with, you know, dragon tiles. (laughs) They're like, you know, good strategy games. Mm -hmm. One that we own from him that we haven't actually had a chance to play yet is Babylonia. That came out a couple of years ago, but it's, it's supposed to be a spiritual successor to two other games that I love of his, Tigris and Euphrates and Yellow and Yangtze. Whoa. Which are right there. Right there. And right there. Mm. And then there's always Samurai, which is a, a really amazing game. But that's that's a quote of the week from him. And the reason the quote of the week is a game-related quote is because this week we decided to play a game uh, a few times and then just talk about that game. Yeah. The name of the game is Dwellings of Eldervale. Yeah. And I, every time I go to say it, I have to look at it because I want to say... Everdale uh-huh. instead of Eldervale. The name of our 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 high home school. school. Our, our yeah. homeschool high school. Homeschool high school. <laughs> I, I wanna I wanna say Everdale, but it's Eldervale. Dwellings um, of Eldervale. Yeah. So it's a twenty twenty game and it was released initially on Kickstarter, so it has, you know, a bunch of extras to it. Mm-hmm. But 
you can get a retail version of the game that just doesn't have like, you know, sound bases. Like here's one of the sound bases here. So um, you attach it to a monster and then when you put the monster down on the tile, it makes a, it makes a little epic yeah, noise. Thematic noise. It's yeah. kind of a cool little toy factor to it, but you don't need that. It doesn't really have any gameplay value. It's just fun factor. Yeah. So you can get the retail game. I looked around. It do, it seems to be out of stock right now in most places. Because it's the hot new game. But it's, yeah, it's very hot. It's very popular. It's a 2020 release. I think I said that already. Mm-hmm. It was designed by Luke Laurie, who's fairly new to game design, but every game that he's designed thus far has been a hit, mm-hmm. I would, I would say. Yeah. Um, I think he would be remiss to not mention that to people when he talks about his game designs. We own two of his games and I have a third one on pre-order. The third one's about space. I like space, space Mm -hmm. games. So here's the, here's the, uh, the publisher is breaking games. They're also a fairly new publisher, not nude, new. That's another, (laughs) that's another California thing. (laughs) When I say certain words, they come out and they sound like other words. Um, And so the description for this game is Dwellings of Eldervale is an epic worker placement game set in a once lost magical world. Giant elemental monsters roam while dragons, wizards, and warriors battle for dominance over eight realms. Players control unique factions seeking to adventure, battle, grow in power, and ultimately dwell in Eldervale, shaping it to their vision. Dwellings of Eldervale blends worker placement, area control, engine building, and unique worker units. Players take turns placing a worker in Eldervale or regrouping and activating their tableau of adventure cards. Action spaces include realms key to power, a summoning portal, an ancient mill, the lost fortress, deep dungeons, and a crumbling mage tower, and the elemental lands of earth, air, fire, water, lightness, darkness, order, and chaos. Magic cards grant spells, quests, and prophecies to players. In the end, the players with the most elemental dominance among the multiple paths to victory will reign over Eldervale. So yeah, it's a worker placement game, (laughs) but it's a little bit different than most worker placement games. In in traditional worker placement games, like one that most people have heard of is, is Agricola. You have a set of workers. Or even more basic is like um, Catan, right? Settlers of Catan. Well, no, that's not a worker is, placement. That's not? No. Okay, good. Because I don't know about you, but yeah. that game, I can't play it. Because <laughs> the first time we were taught that game, yeah. and that's usually like what people talk about. Oh, we played this because it's a, it's a designer board. Don't. I We played it with a guy <laughs> who's basically uh, um, a, a five-year-old yeah. tantrum in a grown-up person's body right and he threw such a fit you can't just do that to the wheat yeah. and got like really touchy about the wheat tile for yeah. some reason oh. packed it all up right in front of us and we've been hanging out all day with his family yeah. and then he went and sat in the living room huh, huh, huh. so yeah i can't play that I yeah can't. it wasn't a good introduction <laughs> no. to designer board games for you no i was like what is happening uh <laughs> So (laughs) that was a bad experience. No, yeah, it was a very bad (laughs) experience. Very shocking. It's always weird to me when when people pack it up like that. (laughs) Right. I have quit a game before because like it just was out of control and it was like the first turn and people are like, No, you don't have to lawyer, you're gonna lawyer that and I'm like, you know what, I don't wanna play. (laughs) If that's how we're gonna play, I don't wanna play. I want to play like a real thing. If you want to play the real thing, we can do that. But we're going to play this thing that you're playing. No, thank you. Okay, sorry. So worker placement is you have a little dude, yeah. a little meeple of some kind right. that represents a worker or a warrior or a wizard or a dragon. Yep. And you place it out onto the board of tiles mm-hmm. and you get something back for doing that. You either right. can do an action or... Or you can get a resource. And resources can yeah. be anything from gemstones, scrolls, hammers, knives. Well, you're getting very specific to dwellings. But yeah, that's worker placement is place a thing, get a thing. Right. right. Okay. So, yeah. right. Yes. I was just trying to give examples. Right, right, right. Because some people are more layman than you. Yeah. 
when it comes to board games. <laughs> yes. So in Agricola, that's the thing, right? You place the guy out, you get the thing, and then that's it. Your turn's over, next person goes, and you keep going until everybody runs out of workers. Mm -hmm. Then you have a cleanup phase where everybody takes their workers back and you put some more pieces out. Yeah. Then you start over. Mm -hmm. But this one is a little different, yeah. and I like it because right. it gives you extra opportunities. Yes. To now activate your cards that hopefully you've collected right. or even the first card that you start with. Yep. And as you bring your workers or your warriors or your dragons back, now they you can put them and activate your cards, your right. tableau cards, right. and get more resources or get more actions or summon another part of your your crew, that that um, which is really cool. I like the ones that that this game comes with. What are the... The what factions. Are, yeah, what are some of the factions, the groups the, that you can be? Well, the factions that I've played with so far are the Elves of Briardale, which Ooh. are the er, an, an Earth faction. Mm -hmm. The Skyborn Avians, which is an air faction. Yeah. The Ember Crush Ogres, which is a fire faction. And then just recently tonight, the water faction, the Atlanteans. Ooh. And the cool part is that each different faction, all the factions have one dragon, one wizard, one warrior, and then six workers, right? Mm -hmm. You only have three workers unlocked at the beginning of the game, but that's that's a different story. But every single faction has two of those four types have a special power yeah. that the other factions don't have. So like when I play with the Atlanteans tonight, when I do a regroup action, which is instead of placing a guy, I bring all my guys back. Mm -hmm. If I have three workers out there, I can then go up the glory track one space, which it's Ooh. hard to go up the glory track normally because you have to win battles. Yes. So that brings me to my next point of why this, these kinds of designer board games, I call them, mm -hmm. are different than like Monopoly. It's like Monopoly, you roll dice, you move, you do the thing, yeah. done. Right. These thing, these kind of games, you have, you have an elemental track that you can get points from. You have a glory track that you can get points from that you can do. You do card collecting, you do resource collecting, and then you do like board control, yeah. right? Where Or tile, where you're placing out your and tile control. A lot of things going on. A lot of things going on all at once. It's like having five people talk to you at one time and you're trying to like, okay, I got this. I got this. I guess if you're a day trader or some chaotic, crazy, yeah. your brain can just do that or a, or a mom or whatever. And your brain can just do that. You are usually asking me to play these after I've been a mom all day long where four people are talking to me yeah. all at once, five if we count you. And then then you want to play a game that's exactly like my day job, only it's fantasy. So... <laughs> It is a lot to handle if you're if you're like, you know, new to it all. And if even if you're not new to it all, I go, what's this one about? And you go, well, you can be centaurs, wardens of the Evan March, or you can be cult of the Night Queen. I'm like, I'm in. This sounds like a job, but I'm in because you've got vampire-y yeah. kind of ladies or you got centaurs. I've played this game twice with you. Right. No, three times. Okay, three times. One of the time, it was a four-player. Yeah. Not recommendo on that-o. Well, you don't typically like four-player games, but mm. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with this game at four players. I just think that you and I prefer playing at smaller player counts because we're not as patient. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And I, I four players... I don't know. It adds something. What does it add? It adds extra cuss words. cuss words. It <laughs> adds extra cussing and, and more vodka kneading, Yeah, I think. And then when you cut it down to two players, which I played twice with you in the net in the last couple of days, I've won both times because yeah. I was able to focus more. I was closer to the cards so I could read them and really know what's going on. And, and if I stop and I ask you questions, I only get, your response and your I don't have the the chaos, you know, right, of everybody of at the table trying to answer. Yeah. Yeah. And the turns go quicker if it's just two player. Right. I, that's how I would always start a new game or want to start a new a learning, new, a, learning new game a new game. Two players. Yeah, I, yeah. So I tend to agree with you. I mean, there's some games that that that's harder to do that that really require three players 
you know, yeah, because, because like, some games have like a you have auctions. to do like a dummy character or yeah. something if you don't have a third player yeah. just to keep everything kind of even and and fast moving. Yeah. Fast but if pace. the game if the game allows you to play two players, I much prefer playing two players almost always. Mm-hmm. But that for me, that's more about me just being impatient of waiting for my turn. Yeah. Not not to say that, you know, you know, our family plays pretty fast normally. But I just don't want to wait for three other people to take a turn while I, mm-hmm. you know, because when I'm playing, I'm constantly computing. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And if I have to wait or and I get distracted, I'm like, no, I got to start my computations over. Right. Because um, for games like this, you have to have a plan A, yep. a plan B, and sometimes a plan C. Right. Because you just never know. Things can change. Yeah. Things can change drastically on someone else's turn, and then that kind of messes up your group. So you have to have at least two or three different plans of where you can go, what you can do, and, you know. Yeah, because which I think also is another reason that two players is cool for you and I is because it's also less people fucking your plan up <laughs> before it gets back to you, right? Yeah, and, and if, you, if you're playing with, like, your kids, they're little people of you. Yeah. So they're going to think your strategy and your colors and your. Well, like, they've got similar thought processes. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. I don't know what it is, but at least if we're playing with the kids, at least one of them will pick exactly where I'm trying to go. Yeah. And then, you know. Well, tonight in tonight's game. I have game, to get mad at them and cuss. Um, <laughs> I was building up to this one water oh, card. No. The whole game I was like, and then I was like. Oh, I'm going to get it this turn. And then you're like, I think I'll get this water guard. <laughs> and then you like took it and I was like, yeah, sure. Go for it. Yeah, that's and for, that's for you. You want to be a good sport about it, yeah. but really you just want their head to fall off. You go, oh no, your head. I guess you can't have that card, right? You just, you oh, I'm just, sorry. You can't have that card. That's only for people with heads. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. I, it, cause you have to roll dice when right. you, when there's like, um, conflict on the on the tiles right so that's something that's different about this worker placement game that a lot of other worker placement games don't traditionally have is it well there's uh carson city has it but most worker placement games don't have direct conflict right in this one you can place where somebody else is but if you do that you're gonna have a fight Mm -hmm. right but after you collect your resource which i think is really cool it's not like you're fighting over the resource you're just fighting you for... You still get the resource for going there. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I yeah. think that is a good way to Whereas like handle Whereas in Carson it. City, where you both go to the same thing, you are going to have a fight first. Yes. And whoever's left standing gets the then, resource. Yes. Then it's they a little get more, the resource. It's a little more harsh. Yes. And so also that's another part of gaming that I don't really like. I don't like the conflict of it. Yeah. And then... Yeah, you're not big on interactive. But with this one, right. you get the resource everything's cool. The only thing is, is now there's going to be a battle. Right. Either the, the monster gets drawn into your tile or if you've placed somewhere or someone else is placed onto the same tile, yeah. now there's a battle. And really all it is, it's not an, even like a really cool battle. It's just, oh, I'm going to roll dice and my dice is going to be luckier than your dice. Yeah. And so then you roll dice to the monster or yourself and then the other person rolls dice and who, the highest dice wins. And you're like, okay, so now you your guy goes into the what's it called underworld underworld yep. which is like a jail so now it can't be used anywhere for anything right and i'm like oh oh i see we're just gonna play by the rules and no one's gonna <laughs> care now i guess <laughs> i guess that's how it's gonna be but and like you don't want to play by the rules not when it affects me <laughs> but the but the cool thing about it is that the battle is very quick it's just a yeah. quick comparison of a role mm-hmm. and then you didn't really lose anything because you still got your action and then also you're going to get a sword for going to the underworld yes but because you need to have people in certain positions to build dwellings which is the whole point of the game right that can be hurtful right but usually you want to have backup for that anyways mm-hmm. yeah. yeah that 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 piece i think can be be planned around but i'll tell you when i played it the second time i played it with cameron just him and me, I got really frustrated with the dice rolls. Mm-hmm. None of them were going my way. Yeah. None of them tonight went my, right, my yeah. way at all. Yeah. I still won. You still won by a lot. But. You embarrassed me. 
I dishonored my whole family. <laughs> so the <clears throat> first game, um, you, what did, what, what was your score? Your score was 86 and mine was 97. The first, the first two player game that you and I played together. Yes. Yeah. And I played as the centaurs and you played as the red, what's the red one? The ogres, the um, uh, Ember Crush ogres. Oh, the ogres. And then tonight I won, you got 96 and I got 118. Yeah. And I was the centaurs and you were the... Atlanteans. Atlanteans. But I had tried because the Atlanteans, um, they're the ones I talked about at the top of it, let you go up the glory track when you pull back three workers, right? Yeah. Which I don't... There are some aspects of a game, especially like maybe this one, yeah. where I don't get the glory track of it. And right. so sometimes I'm already, my brain's already going in other directions and I already getting some sort of like a gut feeling plan that I should do. Yeah. I don't have time or the brain, whatever it's called, limit to like, oh, now I got to worry about the glory track. What is right. it? I, obviously, I don't need to because. Well, it was my fourth game. And so I thought when I saw that, I was like, oh. Can you win this without building dwellings? <laughs> no. Turns out, no. Well. Mm, I still don't think you can. <laughs> but I so I played the whole game with the express purpose of just trying to maximize the glory track with that ability. Mm -hmm. I ended up building two dwellings towards the very end of the game because I started to panic because I saw there was no way yeah. that I could actually win this because I just don't think that there are enough scoring opportunities that score as well as or better than the dwelling score. Mm -hmm. and, and also dwellings make it so that you can score your bonus tableau cards. And if you don't have dwellings out, you don't get to score those cards. So you lose the two biggest scoring opportunities yeah. in the game. But it is called it Dwellings is. <laughs> of Eldervale. So that was a weird choice for me to make. But I did want to see. And I don't feel like my score is bad for only having built two dwellings. Right. I still like it's. You made the cards work for you. Yeah. There's a big gap mm -hmm. between us. But it still didn't feel as bad. Yeah. As I, I think thought I was, it was able to feel. get five dwellings out. You did get five on the dwellings second. out. You, you almost ended the game with dwellings. So the game can end one of two ways. One player builds six dwellings or all of the tiles come out and, and form the full map of, mm -hmm. of Elderville. Yeah. I've never seen the game in four games so far has never ended with dwellings. It's always ended by the tiles the coming tiles. out. Which I think that's fine. Yeah. But I think the timing of... When that last tile comes out is very important. Do you want that last tile to come out when you need a regroup? Because a regroup turn allows you to return all of your workers mm -hmm. and you get a bunch of little actions. Yeah. A placing turn, you get one worker to place out. Yeah. So if you in if the game ends and you're going to go to take a placing turn, it's kind of like yeah. a shit feeling. Yeah, because that last turn that I had... There you was a built couple, another dwelling yeah. because you had a regroup and I had a placement. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and if you're really into extreme board gaming, yeah. and I think you and I are, you ha you add a variant called a screaming five-year-old at you. <laughs> and then and then I you've thought, got a, I was like, where are you going with that? <laughs> and then you've got like a time element yeah. and a stressor right. where, you know, th that, fi that screaming five-year-old is really testing the limits of what you're capable of. Yeah. Mentally, and, right. and then there's physical involved because you're sweating and <laughs> and it's too hot in the room. And you're like, now I've got to contain all these pieces away from the screaming banshee. Yeah. And it's so it just adds such a great little crispy layer on top of all the brain power you're exerting. Yeah, that was frustrating. That that before you know it, two hours has passed and, yeah. you know, you're a little bit more gray and you're a little more hoarse in the in the in the throat area, yeah. and you're just like, "Wow, is it dinner time already?" And you 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 just you just want to go to bed. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was it was stressful. Um, she she was upset, but <laughs> it's it's because that you know you just can't let kids always have their way. But when uh, they're five, they don't get that, and so then they go instead of going, "Oh, you're right," <laughs> that that would be that that would be the reasonable way to react. They go. No. And they stomp their little foot and, and they pump their up. arms out and they go, no, I don't want to. And uh. you go, hmm, <laughs> this is not going the way <laughs> that we have planned it to go. And this week, especially 
Because of the loose tooth, yeah. I, I have now turned into, and I, I, th- I think it's a fair assessment. I've turned into some sort of cross demony creature between a golem <laughs> and a witch <laughs> who just want her. Her only waking thought is about gathering teeth, getting that tooth, yeah. Because the first tooth was lost. I don't know if she swallowed it. That's probably pretty rare. Or if it's in the, you know, in her bed sheet somewhere or on the floor somewhere. It's just lost because she woke up without it. And I was just like, you know, I'm a sentimental kind of lady. I like those things. I keep the, I keep the little tooth and I put it in an envelope and I date it. And then I make another little envelope with money in it and I date it. And I, so it looks like identical. So they go, Whoa, the tooth disappeared. And then the money showed up. And I, I put a lot of time and effort into being the funny fun mom. Right. And I just couldn't do it this time. And it really irked me. But now this time I'm determined to get that second tooth (laughs) <laughs> and it's just it's it's wearing me down i'm worn down she uh, yeah we talked about this is that she is she's a tall girl and so we look at her and we go oh that's a little girl and she's got really long hair and we're like oh that's a little girl but then emotionally and mentally she's still just five yeah and so she's not really ready for the fear that's involved in pulling a tooth right mm-hmm. And, you know, the boys were stubborn about it too, but they relented, right? We were able to convince them, this is better for you. And with her, we get really close to convincing her. So our... our But then she backs out because of fear. Yeah. Our first child, bit of a stubborn streak. We're getting way way off topic. All the way through until this morning. Yeah. And and he is... He is a very tough kind of kid, but eventually you can talk him into something. Right. Second kid, spoiled as all get out, spoiled us because I go, hey, I'll give you a hug if I can get that tooth. But did they start losing teeth at the same age? Yeah, they were five. And so real early, they got teeth early. They lost teeth early. They went through puberty early. Everything, their genetic, their their genetic powerhouses I feel. And yeah. now she, this tooth, teeth are supposed to be vertical. And this tooth is horizontal yeah. and it moves as she talks, but she won't <laughs> let me have it. Yeah. Sorry, this has nothing to do with dwell- dwellings of e- elder. What? Dwellings of elder veil. Yeah. But I just have turned into it does this mythological it, creature. Because that, the chase for that tooth really like oh. tainted our last game of this. <laughs> <It> just. <laughs> It was just, uh, just give us it t- was, a, it was a sour, sweet victory. She keeps asking me for the extra game pieces from this game because this game has miniatures for the monsters, but it also came with standees. Mm. Well, I don't need those standees. Yeah. And it also came with cardboard pieces and wooden pieces. I don't need the cardboard ones. So I want to give them to her, but I thought, oh, if we give her these, we can use it as like a little bit of a Incentive, bribe yeah. to say, hey, give us that tooth and you can have this, yeah. this bag of like- pieces. And she's like you know, ooh, piece game pieces. She really wants them and she thinks about it and then snaps her mouth shut. Because yeah, she does she's just not like nope. The fear of of what that's gonna be like. It's the unknown. Yeah. It's an unknown fear. She the first she didn't experience the first one. And yeah. now she's not gonna experience this one. It's well, the gonna, first one just fell out. We're gonna lose this one too. Regardless so. of where it went, it just fell out yeah. from her point of view. Yeah. And so she's just waiting for this one to do that. Yep. That's exactly her plan. I know it. Which is a bummer because we'll probably lose this one too. And I really do want to give her the pieces, but now I can't because I use them as a bribe and (laughs) I can't just now give them to her. Yeah. So. Which sucks. Anyways, this game is super fun. (laughs) I've liked every play of it so far, except, no, I, I did even like the play with Cameron where I had really bad dice luck. Uh, Cameron has really good dice luck, though, typically. Like, he rolls really well. Yeah. And I know... He's look, got this little chant, though. He's all, what does he say? I don't know. Midas roll Midas or something. Roll. He got that from Liam. And then, yeah. It, uh, but here's the thing. It works. I know it doesn't work. <laughs> but it works but it for works him. But it works for them. Yeah. No, Liam, too. Liam will go Midas roll, and it'll be like all sixes. And I'm like, what? And I'll go Midas roll, and it'll be all ones. I don't know. <laughs> 
Like, I don't <laughs> like know. Like I said. They hate me. They're genetic powerhouses. And I can't, I don't know why, how they've come from us. Yeah. But they're amazing well, and they're all tall and they're all beautiful and they all have different color hair, yeah. which just blows my mind. Yeah. But they've turned me into this creature, James. No, come on. They have. You're not the creature. You're not the queen of the night queen. The cult of the night queen. Cult of the night queen. I do. I feel like this wizard lady. Yeah. She looks a little Kate Blanchett. What? It's Hella from, from uh, Ragnarok. Uh, uh, Ragnarok. Yeah. Thank you, Thor Ragnarok. Yes. Please edit this. Okay. When I when I saw that trailer, just an aside, and then we'll get back to the game. <laughs> and I saw she was in it with black hair and those blue eyes. Yeah. And then she was gonna play Hella. I was like, oh, I think I like Thor now. <laughs> And then like, Thor Ragnarok turned out to be my favorite movie and not because of her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you've had a thing for Kate Blanchett for a long time. Well, Gladriel. <laughs> Lord of the Rings. When she comes out as Gladriel uh, <laughs> and I'm just like, what? Okay, keep How it How in. in the world does that exist in the real world? Hey. Is that, are they doing something? Is this a special effect? Is that CGI? <laughs> She just looks really pretty in that role. Yeah, and they made her glow. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. Is it like a special effect? Because she does look translucent. Yeah. But also just perfectly smooth and symmetrical. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I didn't know Kate Blanchett could do that. <laughs> do that. And then I've just kind of had like a little tiny crush on her <laughs> ever since. But like, mm. not the kind that like, I'd be like, um... Weird. See you later. Kate Blanchett <laughs> is <laughs> right there. Yeah, and it wouldn't be weird. I'm I'm not the kind of person who, when I meet celebrities, that I get weird about it. Mm. Every time I've had an opportunity or have met one, I've always just said something stupid, but not <laughs> like, oh my God, you're the greatest. Just something like, oh, you're Craig T. Nelson, your coach. <laughs> Slam the door in my face or just like, or just look at Tiffany across the urban outfitters and give her like a, I know who you are, but <laughs> I was there for that one, but, but not even like go over to her or anything. And she just gives me the nod back. Like, thanks. <laughs> I'm here with my mom and uh, we're shopping. I didn't want to be bugged. And I'm like, I think we're alone now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, you no, know, I, I don't get weird about around celebrities, be, and mostly it's because I have this like weird ego that I'm on their level. <laughs> that you just want to be a normal person, man. If there's anything about my ego that's bad, it's that I really do think that no one is better than me. <laughs> Not that I think I'm better than other people, but right. just that I don't think anybody's better than anybody. Right. And so I don't operate with like, oh, you're the CEO. You're better than me. I go, fuck you. We're just two dudes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're just two dudes. You're not just because you have CEO in your title doesn't make you any better than me, bro. <laughs> right. Okay. Back to the game. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite part about this game? Um, the centaurs and the, the cult of the night queen, just the overall, like, you like the fantasy theme. Yeah. The, the flavor, yeah, the flavorings of it where there's, there is monsters and you're beating up yeah. monsters and you get to be these, this dragon and this wizard and this warrior and workers. Yeah. I don't know. I it's just, a cool every time thematic. I look, yeah, yeah. Every time I look down at my little player aid here, mm. it's. And they're centaurs. Yeah. Hello. Like You love centaurs, yeah. Yeah, yeah I love cool. elves. And so that's the first team I played with. And they have like a little wolf on the board and they have like a, a cool green dragon and, and bows and arrows and little ravens and stuff. And I'm yeah. like, fuck yeah. <laughs> right? Because I totally dig like, you know, generic, I guess, fantasy stuff. Mm -hmm. But this one doesn't feel super generic. Like some of these it fantasy doesn't. themed games feel super generic. Yeah. Unless they're based on an IP, like Lord of the Rings games always feel pretty thematic. Mm -hmm. But this one, like, it's an all new IP, right? There's yeah. no lore or backstory, but, well, there might be some in the rule book or whatever. But I look at it and I go, oh, okay, I fucking totally could feel like I could go there. Yeah. And that makes me excited, and right? See, that's and then you flip the board over and there's a different team on the back. Yeah. And you're like, oh, the Mosswood Trolls. I'm going to try them next time. Yeah. 
Because when you go, hey, do you want to play a game? I go, all right. Yeah. What are we playing? Because if you got the right flavor, now we're talking, right? It's like, you want French fries? Well, what kind of French fries are we saying right. here? Yeah. Are we talking? Get those like, crinkle cuts out my fucking face and bring me the shoestrings, baby. <laughs> with sweet and smoky on them. <laughs> well, like sweet potato crinkle cuts. Now you got it. Oh, yeah. But you got to cook them. You got to make them crispy. Yeah. You got to be patient with them. Yeah. So it's like the it's like gaming. What kind of game? And then and then like what is what triggers the win and yeah, what you, triggers the end? Yeah, you're big on knowing the end game goal and like the kind of overarching what are we supposed to be doing? Yeah. Who are we? Why are we doing this? Yeah. Yeah. So there's, so this gives you that, right? Because it's you're the centaurs and you're yeah. trying to like... Right. I, yeah. I want to know the whole story. Right. Okay. I'm the warden of Evan March, right? Right. And I'm going to help, you know, set up dwellings in Eldervale, yeah. right? I like knowing those little like flavors and that it gives me, it but gives for me something. you and your brain, it's not just the flavor and the theme of it, but it also tells you, oh... This is what I'm supposed to be doing in the game. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Worker placement. I get, you know, I'm supposed to know all these things, right? right? You go, hey, babe, I got a game of worker placement and you use a tableau. <laughs> you use a ta- hey, hey, babe, <laughs> I got a game over here. It's a worker placement, huh? I got a tableau. Okay. <laughs> but but I'm, supposed to, I'm supposed to know all these things, but yeah. I only care, oh, you're, you're you know, you're a superhero and then you flip the card over and now you're all your you're your alter ego and right. now the bad guys can't find you and i like knowing those things and like okay what is this game about yeah right the mechanics i can get behind if the the theme is right and there have been themes where where i thought oh home run <laughs> and you think uh what do i look like to you <laughs> So I like about this game about dressmaking. Oh it's a deck builder about dressmaking. And I was so excited to show it to you. And it's a really great game. And I showed it to you and you're like, what's this about? And I was like, dressmaking, you're going to make dresses. <laughs> and you're like, who fucking cares? <laughs> I was like, do you even know me? When's the last time you saw me in a dress, man? <laughs> in fairness, I didn't think that you would like dressmaking because you are particularly into dresses. I just thought that it would be, you know, a more unique. interesting, unique theme than just like, you know, farming in the medieval times. Right. <laughs> right. Which is what a lot of games up until that point were. Right. Right. Now we have games like this. Right. Right. With all kinds of cool themes. But when that game came out, it was like really innovative. Mm-hmm. Right. Before that game, worker placement and deck building games were like, oh, you know what? You got to. Make sure to feed your family, and if you don't, you're gonna have to take a loan, <laughs> right? Like you were like, yeah. I'm Mm-mm. like, nah, no thanks. I, I can get behind Agricola if we're not doing anything crazy, like, like the, like slaughterhouse you know, and stuff. Yeah, yeah the, the the slaughterhouse tile, right. or some other kind of crazy dumb thing where you're, where it's obviously what you're doing with the animals that you're collecting. I just want to collect the animals. And well, then... I think that's why you liked Caverna better, uh, which is the the fantasy themed version of Agricola, because we could just take those tiles out of the game and it didn't really affect the game. Yeah, and then you could be like, I'm going to buy the brewery yeah and i'm gonna yeah. focus on making wheat and keeping okay. sheep okay so yeah. there's this one game i don't even know what it is right there's this one game and you have to like buy fish or something to feed your workers mm-hmm. right or you can buy beer and you kind of just said it as like a i remember you describing the rules and i'm just like Screw this. I'm going to go all beer. If I lose the game, I lose the game. But I stand the moral <laughs> high ground, right? And I won. Yeah. And I, all I fed my dudes was beer. They were drunk and happy, and we won together. Yeah. It was Aura at Labora. Oh, it was. But it was epic. And it I wasn't don't care. beer, it was whiskey. Even better. Yeah. Even more Celtic. But yeah, you 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 wrecked me. You wrecked me <laughs> in that game. Usually I can beat you. You typically I'm, do beat me in games. Yeah, you're very... I'm pretty excited about it because you're the one that brings <laughs> it to the table and I'm the one that's like, yeah, I got this and I beat you. 
Well, there are some games where I have an advantage, like if, if the game has a, like a spatial mechanic to it, where you have yeah. to like figure out like a, <sighs> like a puzzle or yeah. an area control, I, I tend to have an advantage there. But, um, if it's just straight up, get this, turn it into this to make points, uh-huh. you get, you get me every time. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, I like this one a lot. You like it a lot. Well, don't quote me on it, but I do like it a lot, but only if I can play as the Centaurs or the Cult of the Night Queen. You would never try another nah, group? What about nah. What about the Pirates of Nightmare Cove? I mean, maybe I might try the Pirates, but nah. The Fire Witch Goblins? Nah. The Storm Horde? Nah. The Mosswood Trolls? Eh. Uh-uh. Oh. Couldn't get me to be a troll? Nuh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so so I really like this game as well. I thought that I might like it because the the first game um that I bought by the same designer I really liked and I described that game to you tonight. Uh, it's, a, it's called Energy Empire Manhattan Project Energy Empire and it's about basically like you know it's it's a similar worker placement where you either place or or regroup your your workers but the, it's about not polluting but you can pollute if you want. You can do a lot of pollution or not a lot of pollution. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's been a while since I played it. Yeah. And I described it to you. Good. Yeah. That's what you said. You said that one doesn't sound good to me. <laughs> so I'm glad this one exists. Yeah. Because it's a similar type of game, but it's in a theme that is more attractive. Um, yes. To you. I agree. And then, you know, <laughs> I don't know. There's just something. Is there anything you hate about it? I, I don't like the... Um, the little mad, the little cards. I like the magic the, cards. I yeah. like the end game the prophecy deals cards, that you yeah. can kind of work for the whole entire game. That right. that you work to like help set up for yourself. Like no. you know, if you if you if you build six dwellings, then you can get seven points. Like, cool. Let me work towards that. But like spell cards, like I'm not really good with when I should play them, how I should play them. If I play them now, I won't be able to play them later. I'd rather just not deal with that. And then the glory track. I don't get it. I don't know what it's about. So I don't pay too close of attention to it. The glory track is just an extra reward for winning battles. But because of the way that battles work, unless you... It's chance. Yeah, you don't win very often battles, right? Because I've... even tonight when I had those Atlanteans that allow me to move up the battle track or the glory track without battling, yeah. I still didn't get all the way to the end of it. No. So here's a couple of things I don't like about the game, but they're not deal breakers for me and I, I, I will put up with them or maybe house rule them. <laughs> One, the magic cards are important, but it's very luck based what you get. Mm-hmm. And so... Sometimes I'll get a card that's like, oh, this would have been perfect on turn three, mm-hmm. but now it's kind of useless to me. Yeah. Or I'll get a, I'll get flooded with with cards that have to do with, you know, very specific situations, and they're just useless. Right. Right. And it's it's a whole action to get more cards. Mm-hmm. So you're like, do I get more cards or do I just get another gym so I can build another dwelling? Yeah. And then. The adventure cards, I feel like the game ends faster than we can get the the adventure tableau cards. Then you can really build up a good tableau. And they have the same problem as the magic cards. Sometimes a card that would have been great on turn two comes out on turn seven. Yes. Right? And you're like, well, I want that card, but I'm really not going to be able to make great use of it. Right. But even... Even if you only get two points, at least you're doing something towards. Yeah, I would say that there's enough. So it's not really about like trying to beat the other person always. And that's why I like your quote when we first started. Oh, Reiner's quote, Is because just to have a goal to do the best that you possibly can with what you've been given right in front Mm -hmm. of you. With what you are given with your actions based on what you could possibly do. Because sometimes there's only one option. Right. Or sometimes there's only two options. Make the best one, but make it work for you. Yeah. Don't just do it just to block somebody else or whatever. Make the best of what you got with what's in your hand, literally. I'm a big believer of that. Like, I don't like blocking for the sake of blocking. Like... Another good example is in Magic the Gathering, you can play a board wipe anytime you want, but I feel like it's better 
if you're going to play a game, uh, play like that, that you do it with the assumption that you can win. Yeah. Like, like you've got something in your hand that's right. going to, that's going to drain them immediately yeah. upon wiping. Right. Or and then I'm all for it. But if you're doing it just to stall them. Yeah. If you're doing it to stall the game, that's dumb. But if you're doing it to save your life mm-hmm. and get another couple of turns or you're doing it because you know you can win after yeah. you do it. Yeah. That's totally fine. And it's like that in any game. Right. There's there's always going to be usually in these types of games, there's some way to like F with your opponent in some way. Mm-hmm. And I don't like doing those things unless it is actually beneficial to me and yeah. not just detrimental to them. Right. Right. I don't like playing like that. I don't like being like, oh, I'm going to build right there just so you can't, even though it doesn't help me at all. Yeah. Yeah. That's so weird. And, okay. So I think this is a life goal, right? Yeah. This, I, I don't know, something, something weird happened to me last night. I was like, we were looking for something to watch and I was like, oh, training day. I've never seen training day. Oh, training day. And you're like, you're like, oh, training day. Yeah. Watch it. <laughs> and then you're like, you know, King Kong ain't got, got nothing, nothing on me. me. Anyways, I yeah. stayed up till one o'clock. Thank you. Daylight savings time. I stayed up till actually midnight, but yeah. it, the, my watch said one o'clock, which is BS. Yeah. I was stolen from. Anyways, <laughs> I stayed up, watched that whole entire movie. Then I tried to sleep. You know what? No. Ethan Hawke, he saved his own life. Yeah. Because he saved that girl in the alley, which right. ended up saving his life in the bathtub with the gang member guys. Yeah. And and Denzel Washington didn't know that. But because of who Ethan Hawke's character was in his gut and yeah. in, internally, he ended up saving himself when he didn't like mean to, he was trying to save someone else Yeah, that ended up saving his himself. good deed came yes. back and helped him. Yeah. Like then, and then you're like, now keep in mind before you watch this, this happens all in one day. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what could possibly happen to this poor guy that happens all in one day that right. something crazy is going to happen enough to make a movie out of. Yeah. I was wrong because Good Lord. Like what? Did you like that movie though? I ended up liking it overall. Now I saw way too much of Ava. What's her name? Mendez. Ava Mendez. Ava Mendez. I saw way too much of her. Yeah. I had forgotten that she had that much nudity in that movie, but she wasn't memorable. Everything else was pretty cool. I like those kind of movies where it's like, yeah, you tend to like those kind of movies. That's why I said, watch it. I, I was surprised you hadn't seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen that. But it's it's good. It's a good movie. But he set it all up from the beginning to make this guy fail almost. Yeah. Or to like prove that he was just as crooked. But really, his goodness is what saved him ultimately yeah. at every turn just about. Yeah, which relates back into the game because you would make a move that helps you mm-hmm. now and then later on, it helps you even more. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're working for you. You're not working right. against to like, somebody else to like be shitty to everyone else. Yeah. You're working for you to get to the best position for you. And that's yeah. a goal in itself. And that's better than winning. Yeah. Because a lot of times. I don't times, ever care about winning. I care about like accomplishing the thing I set out yeah. to accomplish. And for me tonight, that was like, can I play this game successfully without building dwellings? And no, that the answer to that question is no. <laughs> I could not do that, but it was fun trying that. Yeah. It was fun just attempting that yeah. as opposed to, well, I've got to try to wipe the floor with you. Right. Right. Yeah. Which I don't even know if I could have <laughs> because last night I did and I still didn't win. <laughs> but yeah, I think, it, I think it's wonderful. So it, here's the, I, I don't like giving ratings for games because mm-hmm. I just think it's kind of like, doesn't really mean anything. Mm-hmm. My question would be to you, would you play this game Again, right now. Yeah, let's go. You're being honest? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there you have it, listeners. <laughs> that, that is no... You You're could turning not... me into a gamer and I'm, I'm not recognizing the words coming out of my own mouth. Yeah. The, yeah, that's right. We played Age of Steam a while back and, and afterwards you were like, oh, you know what if I would have done this or that? And I was like, holy shit, that is not a game I'd expected her to care about. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were like, hey, we should play Age of Steam again sometime. It's like, fuck me. What's <laughs> happening? Because <laughs> that's one That's one that you, you either love that game or you hate it. Well, I think I won that one, didn't I? 
Yeah, of course. <laughs> you did. We were playing two players on Pittsburgh. Was it Pittsburgh map? Yes, I think so. Yeah. And it's really fun that you redrew all those maps. Like oh, you I got, got a bunch coming. Yeah. yeah, you got permissions to draw a bunch of maps. Yep. And so it's always fun to see. And, you know, I don't know. And you really love games and you're very like system kind of guy. You see the system yeah. and you you know how it's supposed to work and you're really good at explaining. But I'm not always successful at making it work. That's what I think <laughs> is so fascinating. And I think it's probably why I like them so much. It's because you don't care. It's, you don't care if it's you win or lose. It's like Right, how but to also play. I go, well, wait a minute. Why didn't that work? <laughs> it's like, um, oh, what did Data say? He was, oh, they were going to disassemble him. And he was talking about... Oh, on Star Trek? Yeah, he generation. was talking about how you can read everything you want about something, all the theories about it, but it's a totally different situation to actually put it into practice. Mm -hmm. He read everything there was to know about poker, and then the first time he played poker, he lost and he wasn't prepared for it because there's something about it, the experience of it, that you can't learn through reading. Yeah. And that's the same thing with these board games, right? It's like, I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> Of course, that fits together. Like, oh, uh -huh. that's going to go over there. And then I sit down and play it, and I'm like, how do I get more camels? <laughs> Holy shit. And like, right? Yeah. Like, the experience is different than the reading of the that rules. That can be said with, like, lots of things. Like, yeah. even parenthood. You yeah. can read all the books, and I have. I've read a lot of the books, yeah. but nothing's preparing me for the... the for the actual experience the feelings yeah. and the emotions and yeah. the whole, like, heat of the whole thing. is yeah. like, she is yelling. Or he is yelling, what do I do now? I know she yelled no at me tonight. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why, why are you yelling at me? <laughs> and then I go, come here, you, you come with me. And she's like, don't do it. And I'm like, do what? I've never done anything to you. Put her on a timeout. Uh, she didn't than, want to go on a timeout. Oh. She was like, don't you dare put me on a timeout. I guess, but geez, like, hey, I'm not the enemy. It's me, your dad. <laughs> I love you. But yeah, you just want to spend the time. Yeah, I just like, game. I just like. I just like exploring the games. Yeah. The experience of it all. It, it is. It's an experience and it's fun. And, you know, I, sometimes it makes me mad. Like if a game has stuff in it, I know that you find objectionable, right? Like uh, trading animals into a slaughterhouse or something like that, which a lot of resource conversion games have that because it's an easy re resource conversion method, right? Like you go, oh, cows make meat, cows make milk, right? Well, a lot of these games are themed after medieval farming, right? And so then that's just, well, that's a truth of history. And the game is good, but it could have been like farming for space minerals. Right. And then you'd be into playing it, right? Like mm -hmm. if Agricola was Agricola in space and everything was space minerals, right? Or or fauna, uh -huh. or not fauna, flora, mm -hmm. on a planet... You'd play, like, let's play Agricola all the time. Yeah. But because it's got this aspect of, oh, you don't have enough room for your sheep, so you might as well slaughter a couple of them to make some food for your people. Yeah, can't do it. Right. That's objectionable to you. And what I'm happy about is that games like Dwellings of Eldervale give me that Euro game that I like. Because that's the, my favorite kinds of games are Euro games, but with a theme that I can bring to you and you won't go, oh, no way, I'm not going to play that. Yeah. Right. Right before this, we were talking about Great Western Trail, which is a wonderful game that's just a deck building game with a Rondell race m mechanic. But because the theme is cattle running in the Old West, it you're, you're put off by it. Mm -hmm. Right. But if the theme was, you know, something completely different, like shipping wine in Italy at the turn of the century... Mm -hmm. I might you, play you, it. You might play it. You'd still be turned off by the theme, but you wouldn't be offended by the theme. Right? right. And I'm not saying that I'm not offended by the theme, but for me, like for me, the game play, mm -hmm. I like can see past the theme of it and just pretend it's not that theme. Yeah. Whereas you're seeing the depiction and going, I don't want to, you're so much I'm more so into that. I'm so connected to yeah. the, the themes and the flavors right. emotionally. I'm emotionally connected yeah. to centaurs right. <laughs> over looking at the ca uh, the card of a cow right. and and knowing oh I'm just running cattle right. I can't I can't do it right whereas I'm more connected to the systems and the mechanics yeah I'm and so the theme is doesn't matter to me yeah if I like taking seven cards and moving my guy up into this 
one space and then dumping those seven cards and drawing seven new ones. You're like, there's just cards. Yeah. But I can't because right. I'm emotionally connected to the flavor and theme. Right. So you... I've been going out of my way to try to <laughs> Sorry. find <laughs> games. No, because I want to play with you. So I try to find games that that meet that mechanic need mm-hmm. for me, but also meet a thematic need for you yeah. so that you don't feel like you're doing something that you wouldn't do in real life, mm-hmm. which is like you run cattle or, you know, running of the bulls or any of those things. And I've got a couple of games in the collection that still have those types of thematic elements, but I've eliminated most of them Yeah, because the ones that I have left are just ones that I feel like that game is too good. Mm-hmm. Right. And also in the back of my mind, like I tell myself one day I'm going to retheme this game. Oh, right. Yeah. So that everybody in the family can play it and feel good about it. But I did get a new game about monasteries, Irish or is it Irish? I think it's Irish monasteries, monks making whiskey. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that might be fun. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Is it called Monasterium? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I think you might like that one. Over dressmaking or quilt making. <laughs> I think you'd like or... the dressmaking game, <laughs> but I think the theme, like the theme just went in because like the very next game I told you about was like the battle between heaven and hell. And you're like, that's what I'm talking about, bro. <laughs> 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 so, like, <laughs> so I was like, oh, I see. I I'm see an enigma. Goes. Well, no, you're not an enigma. You I just, can't figure me out. I can Admit figure it. you out. I can figure you out. So you would play this game again. You enjoyed your plays of this game. I enjoyed my plays of this game. It's not really a review. I don't think we've played it enough to review it. Um, no, but that gets snooty. I don't want to be that. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't really time like, and effort went into this game. It's good. People should play it. You know, yeah. pick and choose how you want to like really score your points. That's and then, exactly how I feel about it. It's like... It's like, even if I objectively don't like the game, I don't want to pan it Mm -hmm. or talk shit about it because there was a ton of time and effort put into this, right? Somebody at one point cut out a lot of shit from their homemade printer (laughs) to try this idea. Yeah. Right. And now it's sitting in front of us in cardboard and plastic and cards. But at one point it was just paper cutouts with Sharpie marker. Yeah. And that's effort that you can't say, well, this game sucks. You can't just reduce it to that, right? If I'm going to say a game sucks, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be like, well, here's what I don't like about it. And so I'm just not going to play it again. Yeah. But I still recognize the effort that went into it. Same thing happens whenever I'm on Twitter and somebody goes, can you believe the new Burger King logo? It's trash. Nobody actually said that about Burger King logo. But I always go and look at it and go, you know what? Somebody like me made that yeah, and they enjoyed it and they had a good time and now we're all wrecking it on the internet. That doesn't feel nice to me. Yeah. And I don't want people doing that to me or my works. So I don't want to do that to other people's works Yeah, either. that's like the golden rule, right? I think that's why I own <clears throat> all of these games, which typically people who own this many games are some sort of content producer for board games. Uh-huh. But or I don't want to be and aspire to be. To be yeah. But I know. will be. But I don't want to be that really. Well, you do kind of a little bit. Yeah, but not in a way that disparages or or reviews the games. Right. But in a way that that introduces what I love about it to other people so that they can see that. Yeah. And then the next time they get one and they open it and it makes that box fart noise <laughs> and then it smells like cardboard and ink and you're like man, I love this. Oh. And then you sit there and you punch until your back hurts. And, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> and then you're putting them in baggies. You're like, See I'm that? cataloging it. Now. See, that's insane to me. I can't. <laughs> it's I won't. part of it. I... It's all part of the process. Nah. <laughs> it's all part of the process. All right. Well, thank you for playing the game with me. And thank you for talking about the game with well, me on our podcast. I know this isn't a gaming podcast, but. It is now. I, um, <laughs> I, I think that. It is now. Um, um, yeah. thank you for teaching me the rules and, and being patient with me. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's something I've had to work on over time. Because that's true because I'm not like you go, okay, so this is a blah, blah, blah. And then the rule, you say the rules, I go, what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to remember that. Yeah. It's not the, it's not you though. It's, it's me because when I teach anybody the rules to the game, I get really frustrated 
when they don't just catch it right away. Yeah, I can't. I'm a visual learner. Like, yeah. okay, who wants to go first? You, obviously, because whatever you do, that's what I'm going to do until I can, until it catches. Yeah. Until I can catch on. And then I can figure it out. Yeah. But I've been working on like trying to be more patient, like with Cameron too, because Cameron asks a lot of questions mm -hmm. and I'm like, I just answered that. I just answered that. <laughs> I answered that, buddy. Buddy, I answered that. <laughs> right. Like those kinds of things. And so I've been working on more like, yeah, no, you just do that and you can put that over there and do this mm -hmm. because I want to be more patient about it because it's not anyone's fault that I read a rule book and it just clicks and yeah. I, and I remember how all that works. And, and it's not, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's just, that's not everyone's thing. No, it's not. No. And I've also gotten to the point where you can't just sit down at a table and read the rule book to somebody. No. You have to sit down and go, here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. And here's how you do each thing. Yeah. That's how you have to teach it. And yep. I think that's why you like Rodney Smith's videos from Watch It Played is because he does, that's how he does it. He yeah. says, here's what you're doing. Here's who you are. And here's how you do it. Yep. And here's how you win. Yep. Here's all the pieces. Here's what an example looks like. Yeah. And then, you know, he's very excited about it yeah. and he's very like knowledgeable about it. He's just like, um, I don't know. Let me look in the game. Come on. Yeah. Just... I, I, I like that idea of it. Yeah. <laughs> he's never going. Um, and then you do. The, oh, hold on a second. <laughs> and then he's reading the rule book. Yes, it says definitely you can't do that. <laughs> um. <laughs> because I can't tell you. I know it's kind of funny and you're going to get kind of offended maybe. No. But I think it's kind of funny that we're like third, fourth round. And then you do something. I go, wait a minute. You go, oh, no. Yeah, that's totally legal. I go, well, that's surprising news <laughs> because I didn't know. I've been to these kind of board games before where new rules just pop up out of nowhere <laughs> that I didn't know about. But but in fairness, that's part of the frustration for me is because I'll say, no, yeah, you can do that. I said that right up front and you'll go, uh huh. And you'll do this little <laughs> squint thing and I'll be like, Skeptibles. no, I did tell you about it. And you'll be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you did. I've been to those board game parties. <laughs> Anyways, well, maybe we'll do games in the future, but our next one. The next one, do you want to give people? No, let's not. Let's make it a surprise. Yeah. Well, let's make it like, you know, fun. I think it'll be fun. I know what the idea is, but <laughs> <laughs> hopefully you'll think it's fun too. Okay. All right. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> the Lou and Me podcast is a Matthias Source production. The song is No Carpets by The New Forevers, produced and edited by Moose, hosted by Lou and me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.